And so I'm George Yu. I was born in Wuhan, China, the fifth largest city in China. And both of my parents were and are still serious scientists. And I essentially, I think curiosity is a trait that runs in my family. And this is a picture of me, I think I was six years old, watching my dad perform an experiment in his lab. And so when I was 11 years old, my family came to the US. And I started learning English for the first time in my life. It was tough back then, but you know what? I like challenges. And this is why I went to Georgia Tech and why I love rock climbing. Growing up, I've always been fascinated by how nature deals with the complexities of the world. Usually creatures oftentimes use large arrays of sensors to understand this environment, to be able to survive. And I sort of experienced this first firsthand rock climbing. So another good example is this creature, it's called a narwhal, has a long majestic spiral tusk that's an Arctic, it lives in the Arctic. So one would think that the tusk is used for hunting or for defense, but it's actually jam-packed with sensors. Sensors to help it understand the temperature of the water, its pressure, how fast it's moving through the water, as well as how much salt is in the water. All that information combined to help it survive in that harsh environment. So we humans do the same. We humans use our senses to survive our sense of sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste have served as well from the caveman days to now. But today, we have technology to be able to augment our senses. And so sensing is important in general because sensing allows us, whether it's through our own natural senses or through technology, allows us to gain knowledge about our environment knowledge that we as individuals or as a society can perform actions on. So I first started to learn how to do this when I was at NASA. This is right out of Georgia Tech. And I started creating these devices that combines cutting edge sensors with smartphone technology, the best of computing, human computing interfaces. And so this is a device I built that has 32 chemical gas sensors that allow you to sense toxic environments that are surrounding you, as well as other environmental conditions. So this is some amazing technology and devices, but it's really out of reach of the masses. It's some expensive stuff. This gave me the idea of why can't I create a multi-sensing platform or device that is simple enough and affordable enough for anyone to use. And so I spent months in my lab, or my home, or lab, however you look at it. And I turned this concept into an actual amazing device. And I took this device, looking for validation onto a crowdfunding website called Kickstarter to raise funds. And hundreds of people around the world agree with this concept of sensing the world and donate a fund to make this idea a reality. And so, hence, the node sensing system is born. And this is the node. It's pretty small. It, holds in, it fits in your hand. It is the wireless device that is jam-packed with sensors. Sensors to do a lot of things. You know, look at temperature, your humidity level, what kind of gases are around you, colors of surfaces, how you move your hands and arms, what your postures are, and so forth. It is a device that works wirelessly with your smartphone the apps on your smartphone by beaming sensory data directly to your phone. But what's, it's better than that. It's the device where the sensor is actually removable. They're interchangeable. They can come off just like this. And you can adapt the sensors to do whatever you want it to do. And so it is a portable device. It can go anywhere and last for weeks. So it's been about a year and a half since that first Kickstarter campaign. And big businesses are actually calling us about using Node to control quality, to track supply chains, to monitor gas emissions. Node is being shipped to 30 countries around the world and using ways we do not dream of when we set off this process. But one of the most proudest sort of uses of Node is this. This is not an actual picture, but Node 
is about to be used in classrooms all around the world, K-12 science classrooms, to help kids sort of understand the world, so gain that imagination, that curiosity that I discovered many years ago. And so imagine learning with a cutting edge piece of sensory device like this. Note is also used in many other ways. It is used also as an early form of detection of fever in Singapore, where kids are get scanned multiple times a day to measure their body temperatures and detect any irregularities. This is my wife, Mina, and she actually uses the node to help stroke victims to do therapy more effectively by looking at their postures and motions. In fact, just about a year ago this time, when my daughter Mona was born, I used the node to measure her body temperature while she slept in the hospital crib. Now, that, that may be a little too geeky and too crazy, but that's what I do. <laughs> and so, node, you can see the applications are endless, and these are just a few examples. All these applications revolves around the idea of sensing your environment through measuring, through monitoring, and also sharing that information all around the world with others through the smartphone. And so, let's do an interesting experiment right here. And so this is a web portal, something we built, where uh, we have sensory data that are feeding into the uh, cloud server and being displayed in this web portal. So recently, this is, by the way, this is not shown anywhere in the world yet. This is the first time anyone ever gets to see this. <laughs> so we created a sensor that measures the carbon dioxide level of the air around you. And so we have three sensors placed all around this theater to measure the carbon dioxide around us. So now we all, we as humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. And through our activities, we generate carbon dioxide as well. And so how many of you guys think there's a lot of carbon dioxide in here with all this hot air we're breathing out? <laughs> what does your senses tell you about carbon dioxide? Does it tell you anything? about the concentration of carbon dioxide of the air you breathe. And so let's first start by looking at, looking at the carbon dioxide level of the street outside. So I placed a sensor right outside the theater, uh, I think on the loading dock uh, behind the theater. So let's see what that value is. Wow, actually this is significantly higher. I guess must a, a truck must have come by. And so, <clears throat> The Earth's atmospheric carbon dioxide level is about 400 parts per million. And so this is the cleanest air you can get in, say, the top of uh, Mount Mount Loa in Hawaii. And anything be above 600 to 1,000 for indoors is considered acceptable levels. And anything above 1,000, you should really open a window and breathe in some fresh air. <laughs> Truly, because actually studies have shown that anything above 1,000, you'll start feeling drowsy and with decreased productivity. So let's find out what is the level in here. So I have a carbon dioxide sensor holding my hand and streaming to my phone and to the cloud and back down the screen. So pretty complicated steps. Yeah, that's pretty high in here. There's a lot of bodies. So this is, this is primarily due to the fact that there's so many people in here and the air conditioning system is not capable of circulating enough air to remove enough carbon dioxide outside the theater. And it's a clear picture of basically inability of the AC system to provide better air quality. Now this morning, uh, actually yesterday when we were doing the rehearsal, that value was around 600 in here when nobody's in here. So, the third part of this experiment is, as you guys might remember from your science classes, plants breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. It's the reverse of what we do. So I have a little here a plant with a glass dome that seals in the air and the sensor inside. And so, anyone care to guess what the level is in there? All right, let's find out. 
53. It's essentially almost pure ox nitrogen and oxygen inside. I mean, that is some seriously good air. <laughs> I mean, maybe we should all build stuff like this and uh, just breathe out of it. <laughs> and so this is what a sensing system like this can do. As you travel through the airport, go to the hotel, and be able to find out air quality, find out what you're breathing in, stuff that your natural bodies cannot sense. Now imagine if there's a worldwide network of these. What kind of information can it tell us about our environment, about the way we're living? So that kind of knowledge is something we can take action on. Thank you very much.